we all start from somewhere in the journey of our careers or what we do professionally for me believe it or not it started with the love of disney so today i am going to review my style over the ages basically i'll focus more on from the time i finished um, design school till now so follow along with me on this journey and i hope you enjoy it before i start i'd like to acknowledge that we have a few more people who've joined the channel welcome thank you so much for subscribing i hope more people will subscribe and more people will watch Please share this content if you think it's going to help somebody i'll really appreciate it so i'm going to start with i think photos or a slideshow of my work as a kid so basically this fashion journey started with some sketches um, um at the time i was very obsessed with disney and princesses i don't know if i really thought i was a princess but i think i just liked the idea of big princess ball gowns so um, i was lucky enough to have a storybook that had all these amazing fairy tale stories and they were disney stories so most of my sketches actually were inspired from those uh, books but mainly i just copied i just tried as much as possible to copy what i was doing and so i'm just going to show you a few clips of my work from primary school to I guess I can say before college and I know the sketches would look weird but believe it or not I actually did win a few competitions with those sketches so this is just encouraging anybody who has any kids around them who love to draw don't give up on your sketches even if they look funny and even if they don't look like the most fantastic sketches in the world practice makes perfect you will just see um, a little bit of it because I'll probably do a video later on about illustration in fashion and maybe I'll show more of my work then. So enjoy this brief slideshow. Moving on to my style um, over the years. So I really don't have very many pictures of what I wore when I was in school and I was a school going child because um, in Kenya we wear school uniforms to school so most of the time you were not in control of what you were wearing so I really didn't have that aspiration to try and figure out what I would wear. I just needed something that fit because i was tall and it was difficult to get for me clothes for my height in the kids section and generally i never thought much about what i wore because most of my life was spent in uniform so the only time i actually did start thinking about my sense of fashion is when i was in college and after college um during my college years i didn't really make too many clothes for myself because at that time i really did not know how to sew very well however the first couple of pictures will consist of what i did when i was in school because some of them were our projects so the school i went to they encouraged us to sew our own clothes there are some colleges that allow you to take your designs to a tailor and have them made but for us they insisted it had to be in-house you had to sew you were not even allowed to sew at home you had to sew in school so the next couple of pictures i show you is actually like my final project of my school work and i will explain more with a voice note 
This slide show consists of my work in college and a few others I made right after college. So the ones in college are the ones that have um, details like painting, tie dye, macrame, beadwork, embroidery, because we're encouraged to try and create our own prints. Um, using print was actually not allowed. So the prints you see are things I started making after college so for the wedding dress at the end i made that in dedication to my mom i added black embellishment just to symbolize grieving and mourning for her so that's basically my work in a nutshell for college so one thing about me before i proceed to the next ones is i've always had an issue apart from my height i've always had an issue with weight so i've always had fluctuating weight um, and because of that, it was very difficult for me to figure out what looked good on me. So I really didn't have a defined style. I would admire a lot of styles, but I was, I never really even thought about if this looks good on me or if this doesn't look good on me. But my mother, on the other hand, had a very keen eye on fashion. Um, unfortunately, by the time I graduated, she had passed on. And unfortunately, I didn't get to share my adult journey with her with my fashion career but i'm sure it will have been fun so one of these days i will do a review of her style so that you can actually see that she was a really creative person she did not design clothes herself she didn't know how to sew she had sewing skills but she did work with tailors to make um creations for her and i can tell you to this day i've never seen anyone who dressed like her she was very unique in how she dressed and at the time when i was in high school she was really wearing more and more african print she was really embracing that style so um by the time she died i inherited a lot of her fabrics which i used to make clothes for myself there were not very many but i managed to work with what i i found yeah so as we progress through 2007 um, I'm busy experimenting um, some of the techniques I learned in school and my focus here will strictly be on what I was wearing I will do a review of what I made for collections and for other people in a later video By 2008, um, I had become more confident in sewing and I was still doing everything by myself and I was making a few clothes for a few people. Another significant thing that happened in 2008 is I finally decided to register my brand, Miyamara Creations. It took a very long time to come up with that name. I registered it officially. Um, one of the motivators was I was shortlisted for a design competition, Red Africa Fashion Design Awards. I was the, I was one of the finalists. And I figured if I don't register Miyamara Creations, I will lose it. So I rushed and I registered the name so that if I got famous, because that was what was going on to my mind, uh, through my mind, <laughs> if I got famous, that someone would steal the name. So I registered it. And I'm glad that I did and it's been just the perfect name through and through. So here are a few um, designs I made in that year. So in 2009 to 2011, um, I, I attended a lot of events. So I did make a few more clothes that would be in line with attending those events. I also was traveling a bit more. So I, I still love to travel to this day. I haven't gotten a chance, I guess, since the pandemic. Um, yeah, so those were some of the things that were motivating me um, to make certain types of clothes. And then around 2011 as well, I did get a job. Um, I had to get a job because um, there was an event I had organized in 2010 and 
I got into debt because I didn't plan the things, the sponsoring didn't work out. Let me just put it like that. It didn't work out and I think I was a bit ambitious. Then I, I don't regret. It was actually a very awesome event. It really helped a lot of people's careers really take off. But I got into debt and I decided to get a job with the help of my friends to try and pay off those debts. So I ended up working and because of that, um, I did have more money in my hands so I could create more. So during that period, there was a lot of experimentation and also trying to see how different fabrics work, different prints and color. That has always been my um, my statement, I guess. I like color and print. So I, you'll find that a lot of my clothes, I'm sure even from the beginning, you'll see I always pick something bright. Yeah. So here is the next clip. So in 2012, um, I did continue to make clothes. I was still employed. Um, I do, I will say that I did learn more um, skills um, from the tailors I was working with. So I was a manager in a, sh in a fashion, um, fashion brand. I was the manager of the shop and I got to manage the tailors and the thing about the tailors is that they were very experienced tailors so there's some techniques I did learn from them from sewing that I hadn't learned in school and of course also that job really helped me understand more about running a fashion business so it was a very helpful job for me and also dealing with clients so one thing I did learn was the more commercial side of fashion um, because generally my style has been very statement over the top at the time kenyans were still starting to embrace african print fabric it was still it was still coming into fashion it wasn't even as easily available so you'll see that a lot of my designs were still pretty um basic for okay at least for my standards they were basic so yeah um you'll notice that in the next clip and you will also notice that um, I, uh, the photos look a bit, I can say the photos look a bit more polished. I, I had started working with photographers at that time. I wasn't just taking my own photos. So this is around the time I had the money to pay for photo shoots. Sometimes I was lucky and a photographer wanted to collaborate with me. So you will find that, um, some of the photos are very professionally done as compared to the previous pictures. Yeah. Between 2013 to 2016, I can say that I was really trying to hone into my style and my brand. So during that time, now I had gone back to working for myself, armed with the knowledge I got from where I used to work. So I was dealing with clients directly. I was getting more and more clients. So um, as much as I was thinking about my own personal style, there was also uh, making clothes because I was doing made to order clothes that clients wanted. So there was a lot of influence from what I was making for myself. People liked what I was wearing and I would end up making something for them. It wasn't always necessarily exactly what I wore, but um, I was also just getting into making clothes for other people. I had employed a tailor by then, so I was not the one sewing. So from the skills I had learned from working with the tailors um, I used to work with, I applied it to this tailor. It was a tailor I got and I taught her from scratch. I actually trained her to work in specific way that I wanted. And I got someone who had just finished her apprenticeship. So yeah, so the next couple of clothes are just still my clothes. Um, I was trying to make very practical commercial clothes that would appeal to people who just want uh, things to wear to church, to weddings and such events. So 
Kenyans are very, to me, they're very conservative in how they dress as compared to other African countries. I'm not comparing them to the West or anything like that. So we are very conservative and we don't have a national dress. So you'll find that the clothes I made for myself to appeal to clients are basic silhouettes but of course with print and color. In this next segment um it's i made a specific collection for a fellowship i ended up being shortlisted for basically i am a mandela washington fellow if you don't know what that is i will put a link in the description so you can know more about it um mandela washington fellowship for young african leaders so i was shortlisted for that so because of the nature of the fellowship um we were given a dress code because it was going to be semi-formal and the beauty of the us is that they actually consider african print formal so i just decided to make clothes that appealed to that um I, that style um, i can't really say i knew exactly what i was doing but i knew i was going to a hot place so i tried to make sure that the clothes would work for the weather i went to atlanta um yeah the clothes i actually came back home and did a photo shoot and yeah so the i i'll just show you a few of the clothes that i did wear of course i wore others and this is the style that i wore i really wanted it to be a bit formal as well because formal as in office wear not formal as in evening wear but i think i'll do terms or clothes at some point just to clarify these things because it really did confuse us because it's not even about the term but it's also about the country and what they view certain clothing terms to be so it's a whole thing and you so i'll just show you a few pictures of that i did do a photo shoot when i came back so here are the pictures So in this last segment, I'll focus on 2017 to last year, 2021. So you will notice that the pictures are fewer because I started taking less photos of myself and more photos of my work. And also during this time, I only took photos of my clothes that were very statement and over the top kind of things. Um, anything I thought would appeal to my clients. I am still defining my personal style because I know sometimes what I wear and what my clients want to wear are different. And also because now I am that I've gotten into corsetry, um, I'm very fascinated by it because it's a new skill. And after all those years, from 2008 till now, you can't keep doing the same things. You have to always keep reinventing yourself. So you really notice that there's a lot of experimentation now with my style. Um, right now I'm really into sleeves, so I'm really experimenting a lot with all sorts of sleeves on my clothes and yeah, I guess you'll be seeing them because now I'm on YouTube, I need to keep wearing things I'm making and also I had started giving away my clothes every year so that I could make new clothes. Um, I basically just donate them to charity, there's a charity I donate to where they resell clothes and it also helps me refine my technique i i like sewing my own clothes most of the time because i want to experiment and try new techniques new designs and things like that i still work with tailors mostly for my clients clothes and if it's a very complex thing like um corset i would i would still make it by myself so here it is So thank you for reaching the end and enduring this journey with me. Um, I can say that I really did enjoy looking through um, my pictures. It's been a while. Some of those pictures, I haven't seen them in ages. It's very interesting. I even remember the mistakes I made. 
the thing about being a designer is that you're so emotional about your work um like i can tell you by the time i was doing the very very first clothes i was not very um open to criticism about the mistakes but now i see every mistake and i do appreciate it um, now now i i correct myself um there are times i can even sew something if i'm not happy about it i probably won't sleep because now in the next day I will probably undo it and redo it so yeah so that's my journey from 2008 to 2021 thank you for watching next week I have a treat for you I was actually in a reality show once and since um, February is my review month I've decided I'll be reviewing things in February so anything you want me to review or review but now i will review reality shows next week but i'll start with the reality show that i participated in and i will tell you more about that experience and what it taught me and a bit of how it was organized but yeah see you next week thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for watching this video to the end i appreciate all of you